In this video, we're going to talk about five things that you should not outsource as a complete beginner Amazon seller. Those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Bashar Katu, the founder of BJK University, an education company with a mission to impact 1 million lives. Now, one thing that we've seen oftentimes as you know from Amazon sellers, especially beginners, is that they try to outsource everything and anything about their business because they want to delegate things. And as a business owner, it's important that you understand how to work on your business and not in your business. And that's great. However, I remember when I owned my restaurant and I had a chef that came into the kitchen and started preparing all these meals and all these cool things and all these cool dishes. Well, six months later, that guy just took off on me and just simply did not even show up to a, a busy shift. And I was left there with no know-how of what's going on. I didn't even have a recipe book. I didn't have exactly what was happening. I didn't understand how the, you know, how to prepare for the food. His team didn't really understand how everything is because he was the main guy. And that's when I really understood that and as a business owner, I don't need to do everything, but I need to understand everything. And in order for me to do that, I need to kind of start doing it myself. And once I know how to do it correctly, then I can delegate it to other people. So again, in this video, we're going to talk about the five major things that you should not outsource when you're first starting your Amazon business. All right, Lorraine, well, good to have you here again. So I want to get right into it. Tell me a little bit more about why you think, I just kind of explain why I think that one shouldn't um, outsource, but why do you think that one should not outsource um, everything in their business, or at least those five things that we're gonna talk about in this video. When you're a business owner, the one main critical thing to know is you need to know your business from A to Z, just like Amazon, A to Z. So we need to understand our business from, from the beginning to the end. So if we outsource something and somebody does something wrong, we will catch it. We don't want to let these things go because we could end up losing a lot of money. So understanding your business is key. So one of the main things that um, I see happening a lot is people generally tend to try to outsource their product. They want somebody to find it for them. Um, I can't find anything. I'm just going to give up after a few. Can, let me go hire somebody to do it. Mm. And there's a lot of places that are doing this, but generally people go over to Fiverr to have it um, sourced but they have a list. Imagine how many other people are going to them. How yeah. many hundreds or thousands of people are going to them. If they have a list of products over there, they'll say, okay, I'll let me work on it and I'll get back to you in a day. And then they pick something on the list and give it to you. And we can see tons of students coming in with the same product. Why? Right. They're all going to the same people to get them. And right. they're gonna, they're, it's easier just to hand out the same one. Yeah. So, and you could spot that. If you knew this, you would be able to spot it. So you're saying that the very first thing that one should not outsource is their product. They should be doing it, doing the research themselves, understanding how research works, understanding how the algorithm works, and then picking the product themselves, right? Absolutely, because you yeah. want to be able to analyze it. Even if somebody you outsource gives you a product, you want to take that product. You're not just going to go take it and sell it. You're going to analyze it. Right. You want to know how much competition is there. Do I have room to get in there? Are the reviews like huge where if I come in with zero reviews and somebody's got 10,000 and 6,000 and 17,000, how, who's going to pick my little zero, you know? Right. So you need to make sure there's a healthy balance in there and you need to understand your, is it seasonal? Is it only selling in the summertime? And then after summertime comes, is it going to drop and I'll get no sales? So understanding and being able to analyze your product is critical. Right. So the second thing, as, as you guys heard, is analyzing your product. So the first is you don't want to outsource product research, then you don't want to outsource product analysis. And one thing that I really realized after doing, you know, product research and analysis to thousands of products over the past years is that as you're doing research, you find ideas to differentiate your product. As you're doing analysis, you find ideas to differentiate your product. And as we both know that product differentiation is probably even more important than product research, right? Because you could have an okay niche and okay product but if you differentiate it correctly you could actually go to the top of the of the search and do very well right and vice exactly. versa exactly i've seen great products where people just don't do anything because they're just simply creating the same exact product that 10 other sellers are selling right yes and when we do an in-depth analysis on the product we go look we, we check out what other people are doing yeah. we check why they're getting bad reviews why are they getting such bad reviews and it can be as simple as a strap something that everybody's complaining about. I love this, but I wish it had a strap. I love this, but, and this can cost you pennies to ask the supplier, 
Hey, can we get a strap put on this? This is what I'd like it to look like. You can even draw it on a piece of paper and upload it and show them. And then they'll send something back. They might even have it. Nobody's right. buying it because they're not really advertising it. Well, right. we have this one. It's like, oh, I said, well, can I get that at the same price? You know, it's just a minor differentiation. <laughs> You know, negotiate, everything's negotiate. You, you can negotiate anything. And if they know you're heading into the free 99 category, you know, they'll give you a lower one. <laughs> That's awesome. So what is the third thing that you believe that one shouldn't be outsourcing when they're first starting their Amazon business? And by the way, guys, before you go into that, sorry, Lorraine, if you guys are enjoying this so far, and if you guys, you know, uh, um, love our other videos, especially the videos that I do with Lorraine, uh, and it's your first time to our channel, subscribe to the channel, and uh, make sure that you're smashing that thumbs up button and drop your questions in the comment sections. Let us know what other topics you guys want us to talk about in our future videos. So Lorraine, what is the third thing that one should not outsource when they're first launching their Amazon business, their Amazon product? Okay, so what we wanna do is uh, we wanna create our own listing. We have to know how to create our listing. Right. I mean, you don't want to just put anything up there. It, it, it's a combination of things that need to be in there for Amazon to pick it up. Like how you're describing your product with different keywords. And keywords are people who are typing the keys right. on their computer on their computer or their, you know. <laughs> so we want to know what they're typing in. And when they're typing it in, we want to put these things into our listing. We want to make sure it's there so that when they type, we're going to get seen, you know? Uh, so you want you don't want to pick anything that's way too out there, like right. uh, a, a keyword that's like uh, a million people are searching for it. And it's like, yeah, then that means 20,000, 40,000, 50,000, 100,000 people are selling it, you know? And here you come along, you've got to get all the way through them. So it's very difficult. So we analyze what keywords to use when we're starting out and then we put them in our listing properly. You know, we put a certain amount in our title. We also match our title with our bullet points and we match our photos with our bullet points. Now, right. knowing how to do all of this together is not difficult, but you need somebody to show you. Otherwise, it, Amazon's not gonna pick it up. You're just gonna type anything how you wanna describe it and then your keywords are gonna pull up. You know, if you're selling, uh, uh, baby diapers, we don't want to put, you know, certain things. These are wonderful for kids and this and this and this, but you're not using the word baby diaper, right? You know? <laughs> yeah. So I, I was just going to kind of add a little bit more on that is one thing that I realized with, um, listings because creating a listing could be a little intimidating at first, especially when you're first starting out, you got to find the right keywords and put them in the right, you know, order and stuff like that. And just a pro tip for those that are complete beginners, what I used to do when I first started out. And I think we even either still teach it in the course or used to teach it in the course. When you're first starting out, like one of the, the simplest things that I, I think you should do and I used to do is I just go to, I grab my main keyword, I put it in Amazon and then the top 10 sellers, I take their um, title and usually I create my title from that. And, and also those are usually the top keywords that I would want to optimize my entire listing for because one thing that you're going to learn is that besides the search and the, like the back end search, um, the title is your most optimized for research field or search field for Amazon, right? They, they like whenever you type something, whatever is in your title is, is usually like the, what's the word? Like it's the top searched for or the top optimized for, right? And so Amazon's always pulling from titles. So sellers, at least pro sellers know to put their best keywords in their titles. And usually I used to grab the best keywords from there, optimize my, my listing for those keywords, and also come up with my own title that way. The only difference I would do is probably add, like if I'm selling a red hat and instead of a black hat, I would make sure that I add that. If I'm selling different variations or different sizes, I would make sure that I include that in the title and so on. Absolutely. Another good thing is we need to get real photos of <laughs> our product. A lot of people enjoy, it's so much easier. It's just so much easier. Do you have photos and you ask your supplier and they give you a bunch of photos? Yeah. Well, guess what? Those are stock and everybody else has the same ones. 
So how are you looking any different if you look the same? What we're trying to create is a pattern interruption. You know, when you're looking at, um, say you're just reading a book and there's something in bold writing right in the center and you're just like this and your eye just goes straight to it. That interrupts the pattern of the regular writing. So we're creating this when we do our photos as well, especially our main photo. Main photos have to be on white. You can't do anything but white, but you can do things in there to differentiate. And as we're going down the list, you know, getting these photos done by a professional photo, yes. And you can use Fiverr to do it, but you have to be the one to put them in the right order. You have to be the one to say, no, this photo is no good. No, this, no, that, yes, this is what I want. And then when you finally have it the way you want it, then you say, okay. And then the deal is done. And not until then, because remember you're the boss. This is your business. This is what you want to represent your product. You know the skill sets that it's going to take to put the right ones in order. So don't take no, you know, they're the ones who are just going to have to take no for an answer because we don't. So, so again, guys, five, five things so far we've talked about four and let me just recap them real quick. The first thing is finding a product. You don't want to outsource that at least for your first product. Number two, analyzing the product. You want to make sure you understand how to analyze the product and you do it yourself. Number three, creating your listing. You want to make sure how to do it and you do it yourself. And number four, what Lorraine just said, you don't need to be the photographer taking the photos, but you need to be the person selecting the photos and putting them in the right order according to or based on Amazon's terms of service and what, you know, um, what sells, right? Or what, what generates uh, 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 views to and impressions to your listing. Now, the fifth thing, and I think the number five is really the one of the most important ones, which we're going to talk about here in just a second. But before we do, if you guys, you know, especially those of you that are just starting to sell on Amazon, if you've been watching our videos, and maybe this is the first video that you're watching, and you're like, you know, this whole Amazon thing, I've been hearing about it, and it sounds great, and I like it, and, and, and all, all is good, but I just kind of don't know where to start. Like, I don't even know, like, how do I find the right product, right? what makes a good listing? What makes good photography? You know, like how do I analyze it based on what? Because you do have to have a criteria. You can obviously go out there and, and do research on YouTube and, and do all that, or you can have a professional walk you through it. And if you want BJK University to walk you through it, there's a link below this video that'll walk you through how we help our students and how we've taken over 4,500 students uh, now and, and just simply been helping them succeed on Amazon. So click the link below this video to find out. So Lorraine, let's go to the fifth thing, which personally, I think it's, it's one of the most important, which is PPC. So let's talk about why it's important for a seller to understand how their PPC works and just tell us a little bit more about that. Okay, so PPC, and people are wondering, that's pay-per-click. We have to advertise our product. Every time our product gets to Amazon, we're on the bottom. We're the last one there, we start at the bottom. But if you have the correct skills, you can just start ranking right up to the top. And our main goal is to get everybody to page one. Okay, so we need to have the correct program and we have what's called farming for keywords. Right. So I will put my main keyword in, it can be the biggest one there, the biggest seller, it doesn't matter. I will put that in to my Helium 10 and I will go look and see how many keywords there are. Now, I will take that product name and I will put it into Amazon and I will pull an X-ray on them and what I will do is pick the top revenue makers. I wanna see what the big boys are using. And when I do that, it will take all the keywords that are related to the product I wanna sell. Now, I wanna go within a certain criteria so I'm gonna generally stick between 5,000 to 20,000 search volume. And this is how many people are searching every month. Okay, because I have to start somewhere in order to scale up. If you try to go to the top, you won't be able to get in. Right. You gotta get your foot in the door in order to scale up. And you do this by using keywords. And each time we have gotten good at this one and we're getting organic sales, uh, the good thing about it is when you get to page one, people open it up and you're there already. Right. Okay. It's not a sponsored ad. You can be right up on top and they'll click on you. That's considered organic. Okay. Or some, maybe you're advertising on Instagram and somebody will click on it and that's coming from an outside source bringing you in. And that's an organic sale. If somebody clicks on the one you're advertising for, that's a PPC click. 
So, and you'll be able to know the difference and you'll see how well you're doing. So slowly you'll start pulling away from your PPC and going more towards organic. And then we know as time goes by and you're doing this well, now we can scale up to a higher keyword, higher search volume, more sales. So it's very important that you understand your keywords that you're, that you're using. It's, it's good that you understand where they go and in what category they're gonna go in. Because you have an automatic campaign, you have one that is direct words. I'm trying to think of the name of it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Exact match. Exact match. Right. Okay, and that's exactly what they're typing in. And sometimes right. people will type in a phrase. Okay, so we have different campaigns to use, and this gives you the maximum exposure. We can use keywords from 5,000 all the way down to 100. If there's only 100 people on one keyword, 100 people are still going there. I'll put right. a tiny little bit on there and I'll pop it in there and I'll end up on page one of there. You know, 100 people go there, 10 people buy, because my picture looks the best. <laughs> I have pattern interruption. That's right. I've done everything right. My listing looks good. Of course, they're going to pick you. That's right. And, and any little thing, if you have a bunch of people, if you have a bunch of keywords that are like 250 people, 300, 400, all of these add up. I mean, there's a thousand right there. You do a bunch of these and, you know, 10 people from each one buy, that, that's a lot of money, you know? And then you're moving on to your other keywords that are 5,000 to 20,000, you know? Absolutely. So they all add up. And it all Absolutely. adds up to sales. That's right. And you know, just PPC alone, I mean, we can talk about this uh, uh, for, hours. Like for hours. And and if you guys want more in-depth like PPC training, let us know in the comment section. But again, just to recap here, what we talked about, what we, what, we, what we talked about in this video is that when you're first starting out as an Amazon seller, you should not outsource these five things. And that's product research, product analysis, creating your listing, selecting your photos, and creating, launching, and, and and managing your PPC campaigns when you're first starting. Now, again, uh, you know, uh, all this is great, but it's like, well, how do I select the right product? How do I make sure that I understand how to do the listing, select the right photos? Because there's an art to all of it, you know? How do I do this? I mean, our coach, my, between myself and our coaches, there's probably about, what, 20 years, maybe 25 years combined experience of Amazon selling and millions of dollars generated. So. If that's something that you guys want to learn from, someone that knows what they're doing, click the link below this video to see how you can qualify to join BJK University. But outside of that, Lorraine, appreciate your time as always. We'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.